basically two ways to join together the fiberglass pieces of a multi-panel race car part. Number one is to make the pieces in the mould and then take those pieces out and edge glue them together. This is the way probably 95% of fiberglasses do it. But I don't like that method. Why? Because most glues do not adhere well to hardened fiberglass. Sooner or later, it's more than likely that your edge joints will crack on a hollow structure. And it is very difficult to get every edge to line up exactly. Here's the second way of joining together multi-car fiberglass car panels. I prefer to leave the new parts in their mould, trim them there, and then bolt the moulds together with the new parts in them. This guarantees that everything lines up exactly. But how on earth do you join them together when you can't get inside them and you can't get outside them? I'll show you how. One of the most recognisable fibreglass race car parts is the rear wing on a Ford Sierra RS Cosworth. This and the Porsche 911 Wildtails are complex multi-panel parts that are joined together and they have to be really strong. I've had these Sierra Cosworth rear wing moulds come in and they have five parts to the mould. First I'll have to make five parts and then join them together and that's what I'll focus on, how I join them together. It's inevitable that you're going to <clears throat> need to release some of the parts on a multi-car part uh, so that you can trim the edges properly. When they're in their moulds you'll see that there's parts um, where you just can't see where to trim and there are also some places where it's best to remove the part from the mould uh, so that you don't damage your mould with the angle grinder when you're cutting the edges even though you can see exactly where to cut. Here's a fairly typical example. I couldn't see where to trim this part of the wing with this part in its mould. And even with it released, I couldn't see where to mark it to cut. I had to release this adjoining piece from its mould, place it in position, and then I could see where I needed to cut it so it would join this piece properly. None of this is any drama because you just put the pieces back in their moulds and bolt them together for joining all the pieces together into one whole job.
all five pieces of the wing trimmed, put back in their moulds and all bolted together. I'm ready to glue them together and make this one piece to go on the car. And a word of advice to anyone who might be making a multi-panel car part like this commercially. It takes twice as long to get all these pieces trimmed, the moulds separated and then bolted back together. It takes twice as long to do that as it does to make the actual parts. So when you're doing your costing for your time and your labour, allow for that. This job is definitely not just about materials. So how exactly am I going to uh, strongly glue these five pieces of this Sierra wing together? I'm not going to use glue. I'm going to use pouring or expanding foam. Take careful note, this is not builder's expanding foam in a tube. That stuff expands about three times its volume uh, and is quite messy. Pouring foam expands 20 to 25 times its volume, is much finer and stronger, denser, a bit like me, strong and dense, um, and is the ideal product for this. You'll get pouring foam at a commercial fiberglass suppliers. You'll also get it at um, supply uh, shops for insulation industries. Expanding or pouring foam, that's what you want. So I'm going to mix this up and pour it into the mould. And this stuff, by the way, <laughs> it will always leak out somewhere. So don't panic if you have a leak. How much do you use? You'll find that out by experience. But I reckon, I reckon this one will take about a third to half of these two containers. You mix them in equal parts and you've got to mix them well with a wire whisk on a cordless drill. Pouring foam to glue these pieces together way more strongly than you could ever do with edge gluing because the foam adheres to the whole surface of all the pieces. It's light as well as being incredibly strong so uh, the weight is of no consequence whatsoever. You've got to be careful when you're pouring this. It's been a 30 degree, 30 degree day today and I've been waiting and I don't know whether you can hear the rain on the roof there's a bit of sun around and rebels under the, <laughs> under the rates car. Um, but I've been waiting for the temperature to drop, which it has now. If you are pouring foam and it was over 30 degrees in your area, I would wait and do it late in the day or last thing at night or first thing in the morning. Don't do it when it's hot, it'll just go off too quickly. Got to mix them up, pour it in and we'll get this job done.
this Ford Sierra Cosworth wing, there were three openings when all the moulds were bolted together where I could pour the foam in and let it come out. What do you do if you've got a multi-panel car part and when it's all the moulds are bolted together, there are no openings? How do you get the foam in then? Well, what you do is you use a hole saw without a guide bit and you drill out uh, about a 50 mil hole in a place where it won't be seen or it's easy to be repaired and you make a hole in your mould uh, and, you, and you put that through the part that you've made as well and then you pour your foam in uh, positioning the mould so that that hole's at the highest point and then the foam will work its way up and come out then when the foam uh, is hardened you take the part out of the moulds trim the excess foam off and then you take the piece of fiberglass that you've drilled out and you glue it back in place and you bog it. Uh, that leaves your mould uh, with a hole in it and you do the repair to the mould the same way. You keep the part, that you, the circle that you've drilled out and you just take that in position while you're making the parts in the mould and then to pour the mould with foam, you take that plug out. Got it?